So here's our old television, and as you can see, it has a big white blotch on the side where it's gone bad. We've since replaced it. Thankfully, it was still under warranty, and they gave us kind of the, the, the runaround and made us wait three hours on the phone and gave us pretty much sent us down every dead end we possibly they could possibly send us until about a month a month after them doing that we finally got like a receipt from them from Vizio and they gave us actually a little bit more than this television is worth so we just went to Walmart and bought an even bigger television so it all worked out still has terrible customer service from Vizio but we still have this one which is pretty nice so now we have two LCD screens I say Let's try to open this thing up and see if we can fix that white blotch. Now, it may be that the internal like video driver board is actually busted, but it could also be that it's just a simple broken solder joint. So this television is actually a Vizio E500i-A1. And it has a built-in little computer, so I guess it's called a smart TV. It can play from a USB stick I have in there. Although I'd, it's really not much better than a Raspberry Pi connected up to a television. The color is really washed out, and it seems to have issues with color, too. Like, it'll just, I don't know, there's something about it. The color temperature, maybe? Like, down there. See that? That looks that looks horribly shitty. Now, granted, this video is, is only 720p, but still, it should look okay, because, like, this video looks fine on my computer monitor. But, oh, well. Oh god, that looks nasty. Now this television says it has 120 hertz Wi-Fi and all the other stuff on there. Oddly enough, it does not have VGA or HDMI, so you cannot hook a computer up to it unless you're using HDMI. And that's just kind of stupid in my opinion because I don't really use HDMI for monitors. I use either VGA or HD or DVI or whatever the connector is called. Now back here we have our all of our inputs. Of course, our power goes in here. And we have audio input, Ethernet, video input, and whatever. Four HDMI inputs, and the USB connector for our USB flash drives. I just, I don't know. Something about screens this big, it just looks disgusting almost to me. Because if a screen is going to be this big, it, it has to be at least like 12,000 pixels across. Because if I'm going to have a screen... I, if, if, if it's just going to be 1080p, I might as well just have it like 15 inches across. But, that being said, I'm not a fan of television. I, I, squ I quit watching television in 2008, and I just go with computer. Only television I want is one like that, so I can have my NES and stuff hook up to, hooked up to it, because that's really all I need. But back to this, and besides my actual gripes about television, let's open it up and see how it looks. Now, after like a week or so of messing with their customer service, they sent out some television repairman... Oh and he took this thing all apart and replaced like two or three boards and it did nothing and actually I think I think that's whenever we had the issues with the just everything turning very white come up so evidently they hire idiots to be their repair people but oh well That is so few parts in there. Wow. Nice piece of aluminium there. Probably the first thing I'll do is I'll just see if whole, wiggling some of these components changes the board, uh, changes the picture at all. I don't think it would, but who knows. Then I think after that, if that doesn't help anything, 
we'll strip that, we'll strip out all these parts and we will check this board that's underneath here because I think there's a long board that connects to the actually that actually connects to the LCD screen and we'll see if that c can change anything. It might just be that the screen's just it's just it's just the screen itself and it can't be fixed. But either way, I don't really care. It's just a crappy television. I couldn't find any issues with the stuff on here, but I'm thinking maybe this stuff is just like uh, converting the inputs into video signal that then moved down to here, which I think is another board back here that I didn't see before. So let's remove this plate and see if there's anything wrong with that board. Well, that board's quite tiny. So if I unplug this cable, it, hmm, the white spot goes away. So maybe it is on the actual video processing board. Okay, so whenever I unplug this, that b white blotch goes away, but so does everything else. So I can't tell if maybe it turns off the screen or if it turns off just the video signal to the screen. Now, that could mean that the issue is still on this side of the circuit, or it could mean that the issue is still on this side of the circuit. Let's take out this stuff and just see if maybe it's just like the connections from the circuit board to the LCD screen itself are the actual issue. That was pretty interesting. There's these contacts that run across the entire board. It could be that just a few of these contacts have c come loose on this ribbon cable, and that may cause the issue. Don't know, though. So I'll power it up, and I'll press on these ribbon cables to see if maybe it's just bad connection on right here. Well, that's a shame. So that didn't do anything. In regards to all this tinkering around and information that we've gathered, I think it would be funner just to break this than to fix it because it's just kind of a piece of crap. Just another piece of crap from China. Not kind of already have a, bit, a better television now. I'm thinking recording this in high speed while I shoot it with a crossbow. What do you think about that? That'd be pretty cool. See an arrow going through the screen. Of course, while well, it's on and it's playing a video. Don't know what kind of video I should play on it. Of course, I'll try to get a 1080p video playing on it. And maybe something with a high contrast. So, or, or like a lot of lines or something like that. So it, ha so you can definitely see detail on it. So that'd be pretty nice. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I'm just going to put it back together just enough to have the stand on it. And so it can kind of sit upright so we can shoot it. So like that. There we go. That's good enough. All well, this other extra stuff. Nice little speakers. And I think my power is dead. What do you think? I'll have to recharge that. That's for sure. But anyway, 
Now we're going to have to decide on the demise of this panel. Now, if I were to like to shoot an arrow into this part right here, it would probably only just break a little bit around here and just break a couple lines across there. So we still have other parts of the panel to break. So we could probably we could probably draw this out and do like three different things with it. Like probably we, what what I do is first I would shoot with an arrow, and then I can maybe get like a shotgun from a relative or something like that, and we could shoot it. And then maybe I could just get a really long extension cord and chuck it off a roof, and we could see it falling off a roof and it quickly go out uh, in high speed. I probably record it at 240 frames per second because even though my camera goes up to 1000 frames per second, once you go past 240 FPS, you, the resolution goes down pretty low. But I think the 512 by like 480 resolution that, you, that, that it makes at 240 is probably good enough to watch. But of course, I would also have 1080p video on another camera running, so I could integrate both videos together. So that, so it wouldn't always, it wouldn't only be low quality; it'd be high quality, normal speed, low quality, high speed. So I think that'd be good enough. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this because I really didn't want this TV sitting around. I really have no use for it. Now, unfortunately, if you came here looking for a way to fix your screen and has the same problem, sorry, but well, that's what you get for buying cheap, cheap Chinese crap. Oh well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!